Half a day, people, Guam. Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Frank with Alicia. I'm Frank Blasogan Jr., and with me is... Half a day, everyone. This is Alicia Garrido Limtiaco, and thank you very much for joining us. Today, Frank, we're going to be talking about an issue that has been widely discussed recently, and those are the issues that relate to the Chamorro Land Trust. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is that you've been hearing from our community? Well, first of all, there's there's the, this whole situation with the trust properties in Barragata Heights. You know, there were some concerns brought by, to my attention in the office from constituents with regards to the clearing and grading of the Barragata Heights uh, Tomorrowland Trust property. And incidentally, our inquiry led to asking whether in fact the appropriate permits were in place, the clearing and grading permits from DPW, whether in fact Guam EPA also provided an environmental permit because of the nature of the terrain in that area. And because of the concerns about the flooding, unfortunately, we did not, the office did not receive the kind of response that we were expecting, copies of approved permits. And then we started to receive concerns from members of the community about the distribution of some of these properties, not only in Barragada Heights, but how is it that Barragada Heights now has taken precedence over all other Chamorland properties that have been identified and have already been distributed. In this case, we, take a look at the entire process. We apply fairness, we apply equity, and as a result of some of the findings, we've introduced bill number 284-34, which would automatically put in place a moratorium. And it would require that administrative rules and regulations addressing some of the personnel uh, requirements, whether it's conflict of interest, the distributions of properties, and some of the decisions that are ultimately being made. And then also the moratorium will be spearheaded by an individual, either a retired judge from Guam or CNMI to be appointed by the governor of Guam. So the governor will still have a direct influence in this process. So there are a lot of concerns, a lot of questions being raised with regards to that. And we need to restore integrity into the process. We need to restore faith into the Chamorro Land Trust program and assure all of the beneficiaries that the rules and regulations and the laws are being properly followed. It's transparent and that it ultimately works the way it should be according to law. So the moratorium that you uh, referenced earlier, uh, that moratorium and the length of time it would last would be consistent with how long the process would take uh, in terms of this review by a receiver. The timeline is immediately after the adoption of rules and regulations, 90 days, days thereafter, and then it would conclude, the moratorium would conclude. But in the, during, in the interim, some of the concerns that I, I've addressed uh, should be uh, rectified. Thank you everyone for joining us in this episode of Let's Be Frank with Alicia. We want to thank you for sharing some of the issues and concerns regarding our community. We encourage you to please send us your questions, send us your concerns to Let's Be Frank with Alicia at gmail.com and to any of our social media platforms. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sizus Masi and Maraming Salamapo. Thank you, Sizus Masi and Maraming Salamapo. I'm Frank Blasogan Jr. and I approve this message. <laughs>